Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all here. Hopefully you all had a good rest yesterday. We only have two people watching right now, so we're just going to wait until uh, some more people show up. And then we'll get started. We got five people watching now. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes. If you haven't uh, gotten ready already, you should have uh, 7.4 and 7.5 printed. Um, after today's lesson, um, I think I already wrote it in the announcement, but we're essentially going to be slowing down after that point. Um, so we've gotten through, or this is like the last day of kind of rushing. Um, so we're going to have the office hours tomorrow we're gonna have a quiz on thursday and then we start chapter eight on friday and it'll be much slower pace so it'll be a shorter lesson on friday um and technically that would almost catch us up so we can slow down just a little bit um but that's the idea so just gonna wait a couple more minutes and then we will get started did I update Teach Assist? Yes, Teach Assist is updated with all of your marks. I mean, you didn't have to ask me. You can literally check. Um, but yes, Teach Assist is updated with your math space marks. Uh, so take a look at those. Uh, not like It's not going to make significant changes at this point in time, but it is what it is. Uh, it's probably like a point something increase, so hopefully that helps some of you. Okay, just one more minute and then we will get started. One more minute. Oh, uh, there is an announcement I have to make. Um, please note for tomorrow. Um, there is, or starting tomorrow, you can start... Um, visiting the school to pick up stuff from your lockers. I'll be posting up the Excel, uh, the spreadsheet uh, link, as well as the letter for you to see on on uh, on Google Classroom. So please make sure you take a look at that and you can visit uh, according to your time slot.
Okay. Let's get started. We got eight people watching. I think that's pretty much the regular people that normally come in on time. So let's get started. Okay. So today we're moving on into specifically uh, trigonometry. So trigonometry is important mainly because um, the stuff, well, with trigonometry, um, it's talking about uh, trig ratios, how to solve right angle triangles using uh, your special buttons, sine, cosine, and tangent, um, and kind of all the importance that comes from it. And it's essentially, uh, as you go into grade 11 math, which is also mandatory, uh, this is pretty important for that, uh, for that stuff. Okay. So let's first talk about um, looking at our, uh, our thing here. And for some reason, when it moves a lot, it seems to be uh, flickering a lot, but that's okay. Hopefully that fixes it. Okay. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. So, um, main thing, when you look at a triangle, you should know what a hi where the hypotenuse is. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of the triangle. I don't like saying the diagonal side of the triangle mainly because, well, it, if the triangle is not oriented r like this, then the diagonal could be in whatever direction. Like your diagonal could be technically horizontal in your diagram. So we can't really have that. Your hypotenuse is always on the opposite of the right angle. So if this is your right angle here, it's going to be opposite of that. Okay. So there's your hypotenuse. That's how you're going to always find the hypotenuse. Then let's say for these next two words let's pick an angle so i'm going to pick angle a so these two words now are going to be relevant to angle a specifically so for angle a this would be called the adjacent side okay and what adjacent means in english is to be beside if you are adjacent to someone you are beside someone um, so this is the side that's beside the angle. That's what adjacent means. And then this side is called the opposite side. And that's pretty obvious. Whoops, I spelled that wrong. Uh, opposite side, it is opposite to angle A, right? So this is the opposite side to angle A, and this is adjacent to angle A. Okay. So there we have it. So those are the three words. Now, if we were to take angle B, right? So I'm just gonna write this as example here. If we were to take angle B as our reference, then this would be adjacent here. Well, over here, this would be opposite. So depending on which angle you are specifying or you're using, the wording changes for which sides are which, right? So adjacent means beside. So try to keep that in mind. Like it's literally the same word in English, right? Not just because it's a math word. It is an English word and it means beside and opposite is opposite of the angle. Okay. So now one, a few things you have to note for this box here. Number one can only be used in right 90 degree triangles or right angle triangles. Okay. So that's really important. So this, the information we're using today and all of today is going to be working with right angle triangles. And then on Friday, we're going to be learning, learning about, um, what about if we don't have right angle triangles, can we solve triangles that are either acute, acute or obtuse or stuff like that? And absolutely you can. Um, but we first want to take a look at right 90 degree triangles. Okay. So some of these keywords here that you've se you've never seen before, it might be your first time. So these are the buttons on your calculators. Uh, as you progress through uh, more math, like every year, it's kind of like you're unlocking these buttons on your calculator. So now you're unlocking this sine button, this cosine button and this tan button. Okay. So this is sine, S-I-N-E. This is cosine, 
C O S I N E, and tan, which is tangent, T A N G E N T. Now, this special letter here, this is a Greek letter that's called theta. So when I read this, this would be sine theta. And theta is used to represent an angle, right? A missing angle. So how we have variables like x and y for missing numbers, we often use the Greek letter theta to represent a missing angle. So it's like a special letter that we use specifically for angles. O means opposite. H means hypotenuse. A means adjacent. So if we read this out loud, this would be sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And then cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And then tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, some of you may already know this uh, before. Maybe you've heard it from people or people that you know in older grades. Um, there is a saying that you can say to help you memorize this better, it's called so katoha. Okay, usually this for some reason sticks to many people's heads. Um, so katoha, it sounds stupid, it sounds weird, um, but if you say it out loud, guaranteed you'll remember. All right? So so katoha. I've had students like kind of mouth it or breathe it out loud in in classes because they can't shout it obviously, but it does help them. Right? It does it does help you remember. Um, the order. So, so is sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Ka, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And then the last one, toa, tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So this uh, goes through, right? And it sets up each equation for you. So now let's kind of understand how to set this all up. So first, or how to use it and set it up. So first off, we need to understand, right? Let's pick angle A first. So we're going to use angle A. And but for both angle A and angle B, this is going to be true. This is the hypotenuse. 15 is always the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse doesn't change uh, regardless of which angle you're picking. Then looking at angle A, this side here is now adjacent. This is my adjacent side, right? It's beside angle A. This here is my opposite. It's the opposite side of angle A. So now we're going to go through each of these ratios and set them up. So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is going to be opposite, which is 11 over hypotenuse, which is 15. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent is 8. Hypotenuse is 15. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is 11 over 8. And there we set up our ratios. And that's it. We do the same thing for angle B because it's asking us to set up sine B. So looking at this side over here, this now becomes opposite looking at angle B and this now becomes adjacent because it is beside angle B. So when we set up our ratios again, this is now going to become 8 over 15 because 8 is opposite to angle B. For cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, this is now 11 over 15 because this is adjacent to angle B. And tan B is opposite over adjacent, which is 8 over 11. So the main thing you want to understand about these ratios is that you need to make sure that you understand which angle you are talking about. If you don't understand which angle you are talking about, you, you start missing and uh, kind of misinterpreting what the ratios are. Because if you assume that this is adjacent for angle B, that's wrong, right? So it's very, very important that you first indicate, oh, this is the angle I'm working with. And once you indicate that, then you can continue onwards and then write out your ratio. Okay. 
So let's go into the next few questions here. You just have a whole bunch of stuff here uh, asking us to find the missing side. So this is setting up the ratios. If I ask you, what are the primary trig ratios? This is what it's asking you for. Okay. Then we go to this question, which is, oh, find the missing side length. So when you find the missing side length, you'll notice it gives you the angle. So this is the angle we're going to be using. The first thing, first step, no matter what, when you solve trick problems, is you're going to write down what is hypotenuse, what is adjacent, what is opposite. So here I'm going to write out, this is my hypotenuse. Write it out. This is my adjacent. This is beside my angle. And this is my opposite. Okay. Once you have that written out, then you determine, hey, what am I missing or what am I trying to find and what do I know? Okay. So I know the hypotenuse. I want the opposite. So looking back up here at these primary trig ratios, what uses opposite and hypotenuse? And the one that uses that is sine. This has opposite and hypotenuse in it. We can ignore adjacent. We don't need to care about adjacent right now, right? Because, well, that's not even part of the question we're trying to solve. We're trying to solve for the opposite and we have the hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine theta, what well, is equal to, that's a giant equal sign, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's the equation we're using because it includes what we want and what we have. Okay. When we plug it in, sine 31 degrees, because that's our angle, is equal to opposite, which is uh, our letter H, and over hypotenuse, which is 15. Then we can solve this, um, but first we're going to move our 15 to the other side. So this is the same thing. We're going to multiply it over onto the left side. Now, notation-wise, you're going to write it like 15 sine 31 degrees equals H. We usually never write multiplying 15 after a trig function. And the reason for that is because we don't want to get confused with the angle that's inside. If you write sine 31 times 15, that gets confusing. However, if you do 15 times sine 31, that makes a little more sense and easier to understand. So when you multiply the 15 over, to the left side, it becomes 15 sine 31. You can now type this on your calculator. You literally type 15 times sine 31. Um, but remember and check, is your calculator on degrees? There are a couple buttons on your calculator that have degrees, uh, radians, and stuff like that. And I'm going to kind of show you what that looks like here. If, if you use a phone calculator, I'll show you here, but there is a button uh, that it kind of uses here. So you'll notice right on a phone calculator for me, I have an Android phone. So on a phone calculator, you'll see a button here called radiance. Okay. So this button here called radians, if you click that, you're going to see up here, it says radians, right? You don't want this. You want it in degrees. So you want to leave it blank for phone calculators. That means it's in degrees. If you have a scientific calculator, you should see the letters D E G D E G means degrees. R A D means radians. And GRAD is something that you're not even going to be using for a long period of time. So you want it in degrees. Okay. If you don't, then you will get the wrong answer. So now let's try it right on a calculator. If you type this, you should get the answer of seven point seven three centimeters is equal to H. That's rounded. Okay. 7.73 centimeters is equal to H. 
If you did not get 7.73, you need to figure out or Google or whatever it is um, on your calculator, uh, about your calculator to how to switch it to degrees. If you got this, you're fine. If you didn't get this, you need to switch your setting on your calculator. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay. We're going to solve question B now. We have this angle here. First step is always setting up uh, the sides here. Uh, you don't have a calculator. You can uh, use Google. If you go to Google and you type in 15 sine 31, you can find out the answer there. If you don't have a calculator and you're in grade 10 academic science, uh, academic math, I highly suggest you get a calculator. That is very, very important. Uh, if you want to use degrees, you don't have to press anything. It's already set. Right? You just type in 15 sine 31. You should just get your answer. The only time uh, you need to switch it is if it's on radians. So if, it's, if you don't see the letters RAD, you're fine. Uh, are there any other questions before I move on about the calculator stuff? So just make sure you you got this answer. If you get this answer by typing 15 sine 31 on your calculator, you're fine. Okay. Are there any other problems here? Going once. Going twice. Okay. I think we're okay. I think we're okay. So going here, this time we are looking for adjacent and we have the hypotenuse and we're given this angle, right? So if we're doing this, we want something that has adjacent and hypotenuse. So so doesn't have adjacent. Ka does have adjacent and it has hypotenuse. So I'm gonna write cosine theta is a, equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's what we want, right? We have to include what we want and what we have, okay? So we want the adjacent, we have the hypotenuse. So we're gonna use this. So cosine 47 is equal to x over three. Okay, then we're going to move this three to the left side. It's dividing. So we multiply and that's going to set us up as three cos 47 degrees is equal to X. Typing this on our calculator here will give me. Two point zero five equals X. So I get around two point zero five. And that's going to be our answer there. So if you've gotten these two answers, your calculator is on the right setting. You don't have to freak out. Okay. Our last one here. We have our angle here. We have x and 9.7 so x 9.7 and 64 degrees and so we write out what we know we know this is hypotenuse we know this is adjacent and we know this is opposite notice how the hypotenuse is now oriented this way but it's just opposite to the right angle okay we have adjacent we want hypotenuse so we are going to use cosine again We are going to use this again, but you'll notice we're missing the hypotenuse this time. So when we plug this in, we're going to get cosine 64 is equal to adjacent 9.7 over hypotenuse, which is X. Okay. So cos 64 is equal to 9.7 over X. And so X cos 64 we're going to move things around. I'm going to move the X first. I want to bring it out of the denominator. So I'm going to write 
x cos 64 is equal to 9.7 oops that's 9.4 9.7 and you're going to notice that we want to get rid of cos 64 so this is kind of one big group so i'm going to divide by cos 64 on both sides and that's going to give me x is equal to 9.7 divided by cos 64 and that's what we're going to get here now we can solve that. X is equal to 9.7 divided by cos 64. And that's going to give me 21.44 centimeters. Okay. So 21.44 centimeters is going to be our answer for this one here. Okay. So, those are the three to start. I'm going to give you three minutes to try solving. Actually, let's give you five minutes to try solving the next three. I'm going to kind of zoom out so you can have all of the following uh, on the screen here as reference. I'm going to give you five minutes to solve these three. Um, and I think some people are having a little bit more trouble. So maybe we'll actually do a lesson tomorrow instead. Um, I think we should do a lesson tomorrow. I don't want to overload you with information, I feel. So let's first give you five minutes to solve these three questions. Uh, and then we'll take it up and we'll call it a day for today. Okay. You got 22.12. Let's see here. Oh, sorry. Yes, I must have typed something wrong. It is 22.12 or 13 rounded. Yes, I must have typed something wrong on my calculator. Thank you very much for pointing that out. So 22.13 rounded. Okay, so I'll give you five minutes, answer the next three questions, and we'll take it up and we'll call it a day.
right. <clears throat> you should be finishing up now most of these questions. Let's take up each and every one of these. So we have the angle here. This is hypotenuse. This is opposite. And this is adjacent. So we have, or we want hypotenuse. We have the opposite. We don't care about the adjacent. So Sokatoa, what uses opposite and hypotenuse? And it turns out it's going to be sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Now I'm going to teach you another way you can solve this if you don't want to do a whole bunch of algebra here. First, you're going to set up sine theta, which is 49, is equal to opposite 12 over hypotenuse or x. Then you can set sine 49 as over 1. And then you can cross multiply to make your life a little bit easier. So when you cross multiply, these switch places, right? And so you can quickly simplify uh, into the other position here. So cross multiplying, you get into x sine 49 over 12, and then x is equal to 12 over sine 49. Sorry for writing a little small there. Um, x, your final answer that you should have gotten, let's see here, should be 12 divided by sine 49 is 15.9 meters. And so I got 15.9 meters. So there's our first one. Our second one now. This is our angle. This is our hypotenuse because it's opposite to the right angle. This is my adjacent. And this is my opposite to that angle. So now I'm actually going to be using tangent. Theta is opposite over adjacent. Plugging in the values, we get 10 of 41 is equal to 4 over x. That's going to give, re <coughs> rearranging is going to give me x tan 41 is equal to 4. And so I get x is equal to 4 over tan 41. My final answer. is going to be 4.6 okay and then our last one here we we want both a and b so we want both a and b so i don't have much space here so i'm not going to write the starting equation i'm just going to write uh how to fill it in here so solving for A and B, let's solve for A first using this angle. We write down our sides, hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Okay. So A is my adjacent. This is my hypotenuse. So cosine is what I'm going to use. So cosine 71 is equal to adjacent which is a over hypotenuse which is 34 if you can't remember always look back at the top of your sheet 34 can be moved over to cosine 71 and so 34 cosine 71 looking here is going to give me 11.07 so 11.07 is equal to a for our second one, we're using opposite and we have hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine for this next one. And that's going to be B over 34. So I get 34 sine 71 is equal to B. So 34 sine 71 is equal to 32.15. And that equals B. 
and there we have it. So that's the, those are the two answers here, and these are the answers for the other two questions. If you got all, all four answers right, then you are on the right track once again, uh, and you should still get the practice uh, with the questions yesterday as well as the homework for today. So tomorrow, instead of office hours, I'm going to make it mandatory uh, lessons as well. So please come to class tomorrow at 11 a.m. As we will be starting um, or we will be doing the next part, which is uh, 7.5. So let's do 7.5 tomorrow instead of today so that we can kind of let this sink in. And then we'll do 7.5 tomorrow. We'll still be on track of catching up to your uh, other kind of course mates I guess we could say um, and will our quiz will still be on Thursday okay so thank you so much for tuning in and coming I very I really appreciate for those coming on time on uh, 11 a.m. for these uh, classes uh, it really helps me out especially when people ask questions and it really uh, really helps you because you're able to kind of follow along as it's going live in my opinion um, and it gives me feedback if you guys have any questions comments or concerns so once again thank you so much for tuning in uh, I'll see you tomorrow 11 a.m. and we'll work on 7.5 all right take care peace out